and sleepy all day. Me too. It was a rough morning waking up. I didn't want to do it. And yet I didn't even have to get up for a reason. I just was tired all day. It's been a a long one. I watched the Barbie as Rapunzel movie, so nice. I love that one. It it hit. There was I all (laughs) I had the carriage. The I have I have all like the Barbie ornaments and mm-hmm. um that was like one of my first. Um and I think I have I have or I had a Rapunzel snow globe and I have the Swan Lake snow globe and her wing is like busted. But it's Dang. okay. Um but in the Rapunzel one, the like stepmother like walks up the steps and yeah, like there makes... were a lot of different parts where she was walking or there's yeah. a specifically a fight scene where she's chasing Prince Stefan <laughs> and it's like in a silent hallway and both of them as they're it's running, so... it's like the visceral like I remember clearly the sound of her feet on those stairs going up like the stone stairs. And I think about it every time, like any day in school that I have to like walk upstairs, I'm like, oh, I'm her. And that stayed with me my entire life. Well, you know, if there's one thing Rapunzel did, it was it was speak. It was speak now. <laughs> did she? I mean, yeah, she didn't really back say, down. grow her hair now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean she did. I, you know, I will say this. I just finished this movie. They so Gothel like chops her hair off, right, and like takes I the hair remember. and uses it. Okay, well she gets all mad that? that Rapunzel's going to the masquerade. She chops it off. It's like a cute little bob look. Um, she then uses the hair to trick Stefan. She like lures him <laughs> yeah, into the garden did. by using her hair, and it's just like the, it just stays all together, which is bizarre to me because if you really chopped off that much hair, it would be going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't. It just stays all together. And she Rapunzel. shows up in a cute little pub. Rapunzel. And then it's like not much later they get married mm-hmm. and her hair is just as long as it was before. Maybe so it's like, just like she's got miracle Grow in there. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down thy golden extensions. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe it's miracle Grow. Um, <laughs> we don't have time to be doing this banter no. knowing how long this episode is about to be. No, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared for editing me. I'm, I'm sorry, excited for the Diana. episode. I'm I have significantly fewer runners up than I did for Midnight's. I actually only have a few. So I have a few, and some of them I don't even need to talk about. So, so here maybe we are. she says hesitantly, <laughs> it'll be not over two hours. No, it's going to be timeless. There's going to be no time limit. The limit does not exist. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's well, we there. wait. We are romance or TBR. I was going to say that. Oh, oh well, I didn't know because I was like, I just need okay. to get it in there for the the intro music. Like, I of need course, to have the, <laughs> the concrete proof of I who mean, we I was are. Getting there, Hannah. <laughs> Welcome to romance or TBR, as as you mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. That is us. We are your trusty hosts who spent trusty, <laughs> your trusty hosts who spent entirely too much time on these pairings. I would not trust me. <laughs> I would trust. I would trust. I would. Us. I would trust the fidelity of our pairings. I just wouldn't trust us as hosts at this point. <laughs> In our, I would trust our, our recommendations. Yeah, had that not our our podcast delivery skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I have confidence in our selections today. I'm very excited. It'll be. And good. if you, yeah, if you didn't know. And if you somehow didn't read the title of this episode or see the custom, I respect it. If you are art. just. <laughs> Raw dog in again. Yeah. You, you got no clue. Going going in cold, like, <laughs> <laughs> just hit and play on podcast episodes. Maybe it just, like, starts, like, in a queue or something. If that's the case, we are doing Speak Now, Taylor's version paired with historical romance novels. We did it for Midnight's, and we are back for Speak Now. Yes. If you Ooh. don't know what we mean, literally, we're pairing the songs to a book, Yes, like a recommendation based on the song. It's it's it'll make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I assume you listen. I'm rambling. This bodes well for how this episode is about to go. <laughs> good um, Lord. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be good. I have listened to this album on a loop since it came out. If I turn my camera, you can Ooh, see her I can see on it. my wall lurking. I can see you. And I can the see vinyl. her. Nice. The the yeah. vinyl propped up because I've been listening to the vinyl. 
Yeah, I listened to all the because I already had I think most of my pairings done for the regular album mm-hmm. um, before the one came out because I was like I can't like get all of them in a single weekend like that's just not what I can do. So I just listened to all the the vault tracks like on repeat, and it would just be like if I was looking for Electric Touch, I would just listen to Electric Touch to like osmosis it into sure. my brain. I mean, like, and- <laughs> the vault tracks are not a hard shift, at least. This, these are the only vault tracks that I really like all of them. Oh, that's the opposite for me. I prefer this, not this album. <laughs> I love Speak Now. I, like, I like them more as I've listened to them, but on my first listen, I was like, I don't like any of them. Oh, I loved every single one, so I don't know what you're on. I'm on the fact that I can tell that there are vault tracks and that they were cut from the original album. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but so like, was Mr. Perfectly Fine. I know, but she re- like she cut that one because it was just another breakup song, apparently. I still think it's wrong for her to cut. Like, the other Vault songs, I could see a lot of them being like, why were they cut these? I'm like, yeah, I, I see it. I think it makes sense for the album as a whole that they weren't on there. Like, when I yeah. I had already done most of my, like, Speak Now thematic books mm-hmm. and picked those out ahead of time, and I had a really hard time fitting the vault tracks in thematically like i understand that those weren't part of the Mm -hmm. the album as a whole but as individual songs i think they all ate yeah i mean they've grown on me but it's i think she just kind of overproduced a lot of the regular songs and so they're just you listen on spotify um i have on both i've listened on both apple and spotify there's some setting that i had to go turn off that fixed the weird production thing Mm. well i was listening most recently on apple i think there Um, might be one on apple too although it might already be toggled off for you mm -hmm. anyway yeah we need to get into this we're gonna we're gonna talk for like three hours we are all right you want to kick us off do you want me sure i can do it the first track is mine (laughs) but um boom um, this one just was a happenstance. I was just like thinking of like songs that didn't have a third act breakup or songs, mm. books that didn't have a third act breakup or like they had like a fight, but they didn't break up. Sure. And also just kind of like very happy, cute ones. Mm-hmm. So I did "Wind Duke Down by Anna Bennett. Um, I feel like, I don't know if her father was really that careless, but like he sure. made a rebel out of a careless man's careful daughter. Um, and the water. She, <laughs> they were sitting there by the water for a lot they of were. that book. They were. They were. And I feel like she was working part time fishing, <laughs> not waiting tables. And he was just a duke. <laughs> so he was just a duke. He was just a duke. And there is a line um, in the book where he's like, You are mine. And then she's like, And you, Andrew Keen, are mine. And so, yeah. like, it's a, yeah, it's like a big theme. Like, there were constant things where they were like, Mine, 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 mine. So. I thought that was a pretty good one. Um, mm-hmm. And just like, yeah, like the fishing town vibes give kind of like small mm-hmm. town energy um, and very like happy and low angst, I guess. Mm. I would agree. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I went uh, – well, I actually had one initially, but then I, I managed to get it so that I don't think I repeat any authors. Authors. I don't think I do either. I did initially. I had to switch some Ooh, around. Mm-hmm. Um which was like a whole thing. It sucks. Yeah. So this was not my initial pick, but the more I think about it, the more I think it works. I went a lady for a duke. It mm, isn't I have that ooh. I have that elsewhere. <laughs> I yeah. just it doesn't quite fit the lyrics exactly, but I feel like the yeah. vibe is right. Yeah. I don't really know I feel how like, to explain that. I feel like when they were younger especially. Yeah. You know? It's also you could argue like the you know, her father wasn't necessarily careless, but like uncaring. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. Viola is very careful. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And just, like, that idea of, like, you are the best thing that's ever been my – like, that, the way that they have always loved each other so much. Mm-hmm. So, I vibes. Agree. My runner-up – the one that I initially thought of the first time I listened to that song more recently was um, A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. Because that mm. had the water, and she really was a careless man's careful daughter. Oh, that's smart. I have – I've only read that one once, so I – not even on my radar of like things i could use so i have to like go back and reread no that's fair um there's like ta- there's, that they, works, they go though. swimming a lot yeah and she um, like like physical therapy in the water too yeah right 
Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one really works. Also, but Get that, Me Off My Lawn was a one that ooh, I that, like I have that one later. By. Like, just very light and. Yeah. Light, cozy, romantic. Yeah. They're all romantic, but like, mm-hmm. you get it. Mm-hmm. Listeners, you get it. <laughs> you you understand. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I had any. I had uh, that one. I don't. I am taking back. Wait. Okay. Apparently, I thought I had big opinions when I was writing because I have a spreadsheet and I have like notes. <laughs> um, I have since lost the opinions, but apparently past me thought that The Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by K.J. Charles, which I have elsewhere on this list. Um, had big mind energy. Um, technically, he did leave a small town and never looked back. He kind of left the marsh for a while. Um, and he was a careless man's um, kind of careful-ish son. He was, like, more reserved for, like, his emotions and stuff rather than, like, careful as in he still schemes and, you know, mm, scheme now, does things. Yeah. <laughs> scheme now. Um, and there's just big, like, your mind energy, mm. really. Maybe not like the vibes of the song, but like the word. <laughs> they were possessive and it was great. Mm. So next we have Sparks Fly, a banger. Oh, yeah. A banger, I think, is a apt word <laughs> for the book. Um, or are we trading off? Am I going? Is that yeah. Works? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I went knockout. Yeah, me Sarah too. McLean. That's why <gasps> really. Yeah, that's wow. the one I thought. So last episode, I think I may have cut it just for time's sake. But we have you had one that you thought we were doing the same. That's song. not the one that I thought of. But this is the one that I thought of for us. Interesting. Because okay, perfect. well it fits so well. Oh yeah. Sparks fly is the most Imogen coded. <laughs> he is a house of cards, and she is knocking him down. Yeah, I think it really works from both of their POVs. It does. Um, just the, like, you came in and ruined my life, but in a good way. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, on his guard for the rest of the world. They're both on their guards from the rest of the world. There's also, they don't kiss Mm. in the rain, but I believe they kiss in the snow, right? Was there snow? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Light, not really a spoiler, but. technically, it's, like, wet. Yeah. Well, it works. Drop everything now. They dropped so much. So many clothes were dropped. Take away the pain. Yeah. I've, oh, I, oh, I ooh, yeah, you're right. Mm. Are you remembering I, the scene? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, take away the pain. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. No, no, I definitely, I remember the scene. Yeah. yeah okay. It's a good scene. Mm-hmm. I just, and her whole, like, thinking of everything in terms of explosions, I can't hear yeah. Sparks Fly without thinking of this book. No. Now. And literally, like, he saw her in Sparks Flew. So, well, yeah, that's true. It, it's one of the most apt, I think, songs. Oh, yeah. And also there. they have that, like, instant attraction. Like, yeah. the, the chemistry is immediate. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And wow. they could wait patiently, but they didn't. But they didn't. They tried. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. You really tried. Wow. Mm-hmm. I love that for us. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like their first, like, when they were, like, in the alley, like, out of the bar, like, I feel like that, like, mm. if that was in a movie, mm. this song could play. Sure. All of their interactions, I guess, really. That's true. Thank God. <laughs> Just think, I don't have another one. Um, nope, I don't either. I thought yeah. of it immediately and I never looked back. Same. I was like, well, things explode and <laughs> sparks flew. They do. So yeah. The next one is Back to December. So this is one that I think we had a discussion about this book. And I feel like you're going somewhere else with it. Private Arrangements by Sherry Thomas. Yeah. Oh. They got married in December. They met in the summer. They met in July. Um, She's standing at his front door if the chain is closed in New York. Like, it's very, like, Um, I have an argument for the other song that I think you chose it for because it works very well for that one as well. I put it as a different one. We'll see what we put there. Because, like, as at first I was like, this is, like, the – like I mean, the the entire – book works for this album like it is the yeah to me. <laughs> like it can go so many um private arrangements is quite speak now coded oh, oh yeah um but just like winter is a huge theme sure especially like in their like real like relationship like falling apart um summer was the beautiful times they just like fell in love um and he has golden skin not tan <laughs> close enough <laughs> she she mentioned his golden skin um and yeah, when I re- when I like searched for December, 
and they got married in December. And when I searched for like summer or July and they like met in July, I was like, oh my God, I had a minor like, like my brain kind of just like blacked out for a second. And I was like, thank God. Because I feel like, you know, it has like the angsty vibes because they both kind of regret it. Mm -hmm. You know, like she regrets her scheming and what she did. And then he regrets basically like as soon as he leaves but then there's the they're on the boat or they're each on a separate boat and then he sees her and then Drama, he's like bro. i would take it all back now and then but at the beginning of the song it would be her but like it just it works for both of their perspectives mm -hmm. um because like at the end they were both sorry for different things and you know they're both responsible for shit that happened um and yeah i had a good giggle when i realized <laughs> So interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. I like it. It, it gives it like a happier it little spin on the song. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. it does because they do. I get guess back all together. these kind. Of, yeah, I kind all these kind of have these breakup songs have That's to true. probably have a little bit of a happier spin. That's true. Well, yeah. maybe not. Some of them not. Yeah, yeah. There's at least one that maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I went. This one doesn't really match the words so much. I struggle. I had a. I had a hard time with this one. I went a love by design. Mm. by elizabeth everett it mm -hmm. again it's not really the words so much but i do think there was that like they were childhood friends kind mm -hmm. of lovers like they started to be something and then grantham left yeah and he doesn't really regret that exactly like he 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 wishes that they could have been together but at the time that was the thing that made sense for them like he mm -hmm. didn't want to hold her back freedom is nothing but missing you but also yeah. she like did achieve her dreams they also kind of have a fight at the end that i feel like there's like mm -hmm. the makeup for so it, it was really more the vibes of like if if we loved again yeah where yeah it's definitely right. a second chance song right like if you're going um, and i think he really has to kind of grovel a little bit mm -hmm. oh yeah because she was rightfully angry sure and i think she made him work work for it in that one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like it I yes. don't think I had any backups because, again, that was a hard one. And, like, as soon as I found the book, I, like, ran with it. I was like, I can't. There, there's no other book. I, I did have – so I initially – and this was a result of me moving things around to not repeat authors. Mm -hmm. I had The Duke Gets Even. That's not a second mm -hmm. chance, but there is the, like, mm -hmm. she refuses to marry him. Mm -hmm. And he leaves, and then she has to come back and apologize for it. So it was really more the third act. But I, I think A Love by Design fits the vibes a little bit more all the yeah. way through. Yeah. And it's a little bit, like – mellower sans the third act whatever yeah. happens you know like well he like dives I, I, into the Thames to save her yeah I mean that you know back to the Thames <laughs> as you do as you do Ugh. so there we do there we do there we there do, we do. Uh, the titular <laughs> speak now <laughs> um I would second the one that I know you're going to go yeah. with. However, I did yeah. want to change it up and do at least one that I knew we weren't both going to have. Mm -hmm. So I went My American Duchess by Eloise yeah. James. I think that's a good one, too. It I mean, I haven't read it. but Yeah, but we've the description about you it. gave. It doesn't have fits. the, like, interrupting a wedding moment, mm -hmm. but what happens, she doesn't ex <laughs> marry who she's expecting yeah. to marry. And technically, he interrupts the wedding, but, like, That's quietly. true. He spoke now, just not to her. He whispered now. <laughs> he spoke to her uh, and <laughs> uncle. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. nobody told her about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it does have the drama. It does. Of well, being engaged I keep to saying the wrong it person. Does. I it does. I don't know. I trust no, you. No, you know. We trust about it. It has the drama. It has the I, vibes. It's Eloisa, so I, I also... That's true. So, yeah. yes. That makes sense. And obviously, mine is An Island Princess Starts a Scandal. A classic. Because she didn't just speak now. She got on that man's back and ripped out his hair now. <laughs> she sure did. And I loved it. I loved every second of it. I love Cora so much. I it that scene made the book for me like it was a great book but like that it just sticks with me um we've talked about that one so much so I don't think I have to like explain much more than that but um I did read a lot of bookshop Cinderella um for like other songs and then it didn't make it anywhere but it's a few backups and she doesn't it's not a wedding but she thinks she's mm. going to interrupt an engagement party he, she's not because he's not because he's she's not getting engaged but like right. she thinks she is so she's like in the rain and then she like walks in and she thinks his sister spoilers i guess she thinks his sister is the um fiance and she's like i like you're great you're beautiful you can't marry him like I, 
we're like I have to like I'm marrying him and then the sister was like huh like I think you're mistaken and it was a cute scene um and so that one kind of gives the same like she had the intent to go disrupt something she Didn't was quite prepared happen. to speak she was prepared she gave like a whole speech like the friends everyone in the room was yeah. kind of just like get a load of this it is like, a drama a dramatic uh-huh. like third act burst in the door yeah nice. is this my turn now i'm nodding i believe I'm so not- yep yeah yep i uh good old dear john the song Lonely. that taylor says is her was it her um saddest no that's last kiss yeah what was this one meanest <laughs> i don't remember Whatever it is, the song hits. It's a good one. I did Someday My Duke Will Come by Christina Britton. Mm. Um, I really focused on – well, I kind of like also cheated a little bit and really thought of what have, could have, should have as well um, and like had those kind of themes in my head as well as like – because like it's kind of like the second part of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so in my mind, I was looking for something where someone got ruined – um very young and it was like an age gap you know situation and someone was naive um and so with that one I reread the second half (laughs) because I was like I need like I kind of remember what happens but I need to know um and again spoilers but it gets dark and sad and like it hit a lot harder than I anticipated it hitting um she was like seduced at I believe it was like 16 I think it was um, 15. She 15. Was really yeah. Young. She, it was 15. 15. So she was super young. This guy was saying he was going to marry her. Um, she got pregnant. She ended up losing the baby. Um, she, like, kept writing him letters. And, like, a Dear John is technically, like, a letter. So, like, oh, that kind of fits. Um, and she just, like, held that in her heart for so long and didn't think she was ever going to, like, make a match. Or she was, like, super scared to tell the hero. Um and then, like, it came out because his mother is a wench. Um, and so, like, she kind of, like, revealed it. And it was just a very um, – like, this, the book itself, I guess, I don't know if it really fits Dear John. Like, it's not, like – it's not fully those vibes, but I feel like the situation that she had. I feel like it um, works. Yeah, like, in the recounting of it. Yeah. So mine was – I went a similar vein – looking for i initially i had that one as a different book and then i ended up cutting it mm-hmm. but it's a backup yes it's a, a backup um this one i had a couple and i ended up going with this one instead of the other because i already had a diff- same author different mm-hmm. song pairing um i want the marquis makes his move which i is have that one as a backup nights. yeah but the whole yeah. like he really really court because she talks about how initially he was like very flattering like really going out of his way to court her so they Mm -hmm. got married uh and then i don't really want to spoil what the reveal is but he manipulated her pretty atrociously um Mm -hmm. and she goes on to get with that hot arab marquis in disguise as a footman and good for her she was shining like fireworks over his sad empty town Mm-hmm. She was shining like fireworks in that bathtub all over that house. It That was my first initial pick. And then um, I wanted to do the Christina I think Britton. The, I, I haven't... think the Christina Britton's a good one. Yeah. But I, other, I also my think. backup was uh, When You Wish Upon a Duke by Sherris Michaels, which mm. is the Peter Pan sort of retelling mm-hmm. with Tinkerbell as the main character. And she, Peter, the, the Peter character uh, mm-hmm. like seduces and gets her pregnant and she also loses the baby and it was all in the past but it was mm-hmm. it was pretty it was bad especially because he's like really manipulative and charming and like had this yeah. other girl that he was all over and then as soon as the other girl came back he dropped her and it was like a whole mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. I had I had a few um you know like ruined like in bringing down the duke she was mm-hmm. ruined mm-hmm. um and like a matter of temptation by Stacy Reed. I thought about that one too. Yeah, she was also like seduced into like eloping with this guy, and he was terrible. Um, and it didn't get like past their wedding night, and I don't think they ever consummated it. But he was a character, and so that one I also had thought for another one. I didn't end up choosing it. Um, but yeah, the Marquis makes his move is definitely. That that to me gives me the the anger of Dear John. 
Whereas, yeah. like, I think um, Someday My Duke Will Come gives me a little bit more of, like, the sadness. Yeah. Because they're both kind of, like, both characters in that one are sad for different reasons. Sure. Um, but the Marquis makes his move. She got mad. And I loved it. <laughs> mm. Um, mm. Speaking of getting mad. Mean. Mm. Mm-hmm. Why you gotta be so mean? Uh, a Duchess by Midnight by Sheriff Michaels. Nice. It's the only one that fit for me. Just specifically the energy of the horrible stepmom and the idea in the lyrics of like uh, the whole, I bet you got pushed around. Somebody made you cold, but the cycle ends right now of like Mm -hmm. somebody Mm. made you mean, but you're not going to do that to me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, Like you can see it happened with the other sister, but she like really Mm -hmm. specifically is like, I was mean and I will not do that anymore. And her mom is just the worst. The mom she's sucks. Just super mean. She also she's like, like not gonna yeah. play with you anymore. Oof. And instead, now she's living in a big old city, having hot mm. bird watching, bird watching sex. sex. And all you're ever gonna be is mean. Mean. Oh, that's a good one. I did. Um, it happened one fight by Maureen Lee Lanker. I think. Um, I think that one. That one just came out yesterday as we're recording this. Um, so it'll be like a newer release in July, but it'll already be out by the time this airs. Um, but that one really gave me like the I know the song she's I think dressed as like a flapper ish. It's like the twenties. This one takes place in the thirties. Um th- they're both actors. Um her name is like Joan Davis and he's something. It's like Clark Gable and she's like a conglomerate of like Joan Crawford and someone else. And so like um there's like this gossip like reporter um who is horrible Mm. i hate her so much and all she was ever going to be is mean like she was manipulative she was a liar like Mm. she was terrible um this is a book that i don't completely recommend the the book itself because this person made the third act very unbearable um and like what the heroine did in the third act i did not like um but a lot of the book i really liked and so I think, like, the vibes of the book really fit, like, I'll be living in a big old city, like, I'm going to make it, I'm going to, you know, be big and you're just going to be um, well, and having the these opinions. Well, written about a critic. Exactly. That's, like, I didn't, I had um, a few others, but this one I was like, yeah, like, it's mm-hmm. literally about a critic who is, whose job is just to tear down um, and, like, create drama. And so that one I think fit really well. My one backup um or the first backup, I guess, was Love is a Rogue by Lenora Bell. Um, she just gets bullied in it. Um, and she just has really not great interactions with – because she's like a wallflower and the other like diamonds of the season and stuff are um, bullying her. And, um, I mean, she got a really big, hot <laughs> contractor guy. So who won? Good for she her. did. She really did. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't have any other – I mean, I don't have any backups. Did you have more? I don't think so. I think I'm good Okay. With that. Okay. The story of us. Oh, looking a lot like a tragedy now. Um, This one, again, is a book that I don't quite recommend, but it was too perfect to pass up, and that's The Notorious Lord Knightley by Lorraine Heath. Um, she quite literally writes a story of them and turns it into erotica um, and, like, makes it so this Lord K um, and all of his exploits are aired to the ton. And, um, yeah, she, she's an icon. She's an icon. She's a legend. I loved the revenge in that book, except I don't think it went as hard as it could have. She acquiesced way too soon. He got a lot of small victories that I don't think he deserved, like, earlier on. Um, so like that was my main issue, but no, I, I do, I did still enjoy the book. It's Lorraine Heath. I think, um, I see why people love it. Um, so it, it really fit the vibes of the song. I have the most perfect, you will not tell me that this song wasn't written about this book or the book wasn't written to the song. And that is to have into hoax by Martha Waters. That, mm. like, almost line for line hits, like, the – because the story of us is basically a third act breakup. Mm-hmm. That's her being, like, I would put my – like, if you said yeah. you wanted to get, like, down. We, mm-hmm. we could get back together. And what is to happen to hoax if not a giant, silly third act breakup? 
these two are married. It was a love match. <laughs> so they mm-hmm. thought that one day people would say they're the lucky ones because it was a love match and it worked out so well. Only to a year into marriage have a calamitous fight, miscommunications mm. lead to fallout. They do. And then four years later, every day, it's like the silence has never been so loud. They, like, have meals together and are completely silent. Like, they're completely estranged from each other. And now both of them, like, are sorry for different – but they can't explain what happened. Yeah. So instead, they fake deadly illnesses. And and one of them knows that the other one is lying, but they both know that they're lying. But they keep the ruse up. It is mm. elaborate and so silly. And the story is looking like a tragedy now. But will mm. it remain that way? That not works. not if they have anything to say about it and any consumption to pretend to have. And boy, do they. Boy, do they. Yes. Yeah. I like it. Oh, good song. I have no... I have no runners. No, up. I don't either. Um, oh, I did have the luckiest lady in Lo- the luckiest lady in London. Oh, um, that one would work. Yeah, just because like they I have mean, their fights and things. They have their fights, and you know, again, like they get married pretty early, so then a lot of it is them right. like working through that. And um, she was seen as pretty damn lucky uh-huh. um, to to get to nab him. Um, that one I just wanted to put like so many places that I ended up not putting anywhere. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, also I think I have about it, it, but I already had private arrangements. And I yeah, I feel like wanna... I have it in like other albums somewhere like that. Yeah, um, a little bit more than this one, but that would be my only one. Never grow up is not a song that I like. Um, yeah, I like this. Hard one. I like the song, like the thought of it. I don't listen to it a lot. Yeah, kind of makes me sad. Yeah, it's a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. it just it whatever. Um, I ended up going with Once Upon a Marquis by Courtney Milan, um, partially because it's kind of a second chance. They were, like, childhood. I think he was friends with, like, her older brother, and they had kind of a little romance that started to blossom, and then he he turned in her father and her brother for treason mm-hmm. and is basically responsible for I think her father was hanged and her brother was, like, shipped off to – um, you know, like Australia, but he got lost at sea. And I feel like it's being heavily hinted that he's still alive, but I've only read a couple of books in the series, so I don't know. But regardless, this guy's responsible for it, and now they're, like, destitute. And they haven't seen him in a hot minute, but he shows up, and she needs his help, whatever. Um, So it's, like, kind of second chance and her, like, longing for still being, like, you know, not destitute and not having her father and brother be killed for treason. I, um, yeah. And she's like, wow. I wish I never grew up. Yeah, wish I never grew up. But also she's responsible for her younger siblings, Mm -hmm. one of whom is missing, but the younger two. Um, She has, like, a much younger brother who is coming back from Eton where he's been, like, horribly bullied and he doesn't want to go back. And so I feel like it has that kind of, like, mothering, like, not wanting them to grow up, Mm -hmm. that kind of vibe. In the shitty, shitty world. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of cats. (laughs) That's not relevant to the song, but I think about it every time I think about the book. There's a part where she comes home and they've adopted, like, a bazillion kittens. She's like, guys, we cannot keep these kittens. And then I think they do. Of course. They have to keep the kittens or adopt them out. You can't just leave the kittens be. Um, Mine, I did A Kiss to Remember by Teresa Medeiros. Um, I talked about it in, like, a TBR Tuesday a long time ago. And it's one I think that I gave four and a half out of five just because there was a really sad undercurrent in his story. And it like made me so sad. And I was like so like heartbroken for him and like for the character. But it was still like five stars. But I think I rounded on just a little bit because I was like, oh, my God, I did not expect that. And it kind of made me regret my life a little bit. Um but because it's also like a super funny and like super like chaotic book because the premise is that um she has inherited this house and she needs to get married to keep it um the owner who passed away is the hero's mother um she just recently died and then he gets a letter from the heroine talking about this house and then he's like actually no i'm angry at her like that wasn't her house to give away it's mine so he's on his way back he gets into a his horse like bucks him off he gets knocked out he has amnesia she sees him and she's like hey actually i'm gonna pretend that he's my fiance because i need one classic uh classic 
And so takes him back to the house. Um, and then she has a few younger siblings. Um, and a lot of hijinks ensue. It's very funny. Um, but the reason that he was angry at his mother is that when he was a kid, um, he had a really good life. He loved his mother. His father was kind of a dick, but we can forget about him. Um, he had like a cat. There's a cat too. He had a cat that he loved. Um, he just loved his life. And then, um, one day a crusty old Duke rolls up. I think he was a Duke and, um, is like, Hey, you're coming to London with me. And, um, you find out that the parents have sold him basically. Like they got oh, paid damn to like give the kid to the guy. Cause it's technically his heir, just how things worked out. And so, um, he just couldn't understand why his mother would ever give him away like that because the Duke was horrible. He was cold and unkind and like he never processed any of this. And so the current him before the amnesia was just like very jaded, did not believe in love or happiness or anything. And he was just very like closed off and remote. Um, So the amnesia kind of like reverted him back to the innocence of not knowing why his life sucks so bad um and he was like re- like recognizing things in the house and like making like bringing back those memories of like mm-hmm. the cat because the cat was like a descendant of like the cat he had as a kid like it, there were a lot of things about just like the house and his memories there um and so like i just felt so sad for him but also sad for his mother because then you realize that like she probably didn't have a lot of say in it and um he she always wrote to him and he never wrote her back like throughout the years and then she died Bro, what the not fuck? they died ne- never reconciling which gutted me um oh. and so it's just a lot went on in a book that <laughs> i didn't think was going to be that fucking sad it has both the playfulness i think of like the kids but also he truly everything he had was gone and I think to an extent he wishes he never grew up and ha- like went away with that Duke. Um, yeah. So again, kind of a gutting <laughs> song concept and book. Candy. Kind of a downer. <laughs> kind of a downer. Damn. Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, mm. it, it hurt a little bit, a lot of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's rough out here. Yeah. And then I also had the nobleman's guide to, to seducing a scoundrel as a backup. Because it's these two are backups for each for the other one I chose for it. Um, I didn't end up choosing this one just because I don't think he really wished that he like Luke went back to being a kid because his father was abusive and terrible. But I think he was yearning for that um, childhood that he missed out on. And um, he really found a family with uh, Gareth that we read in The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get like more of like how they really bonded in this one which was super sweet um so i think the vibes of like just wanting everything to kind of like be simple and stuff but it fits better for another song so i don't need to talk about it anymore uh is it my my turn to go (laughs) um enchanted Ooh, a crowd pleaser i did anna maria and the fox (gasps) that was my backup Mm -hmm, okay by liana de la rosa i immediately i just like thought of that one um because we've had conversations about it's like very like they just talk a lot and you get to Mm -hmm. see them fall in love and you get to see their connection um and the please don't be in love with someone else um she wasn't in love with the guy but she is definitely engaged (laughs) and so like that's where my mind went to first was like Mm -hmm. i wanted a book where someone was unavailable or had the potential to be unavailable um because this guy was pining for so much of that book um he was down so bad he and was. there were so many scenes because i like looked up specific words and there was like um a ball where they like it says when she looked up suddenly and her eyes found his gideon bit back a gasp oh my god yeah like, <laughs> i thought of it with the like uh, meeting eyes across yeah, the room meeting eyes because they yeah. they do that so many times they stare at each other for the span of two of his staggered breaths like he's very dramatic. Yes. Um, and they're both very dramatic about the eye contact that they make. I mean, as they should be. He like looks over at her like five times, and her sister is like, "Yeah, he's like literally just like staring at you," and because she's also trying not to stare at him. They kind of felt forbidden 
Mm-hmm. But like the whisper conversations, like their eyes, like they like spoke to each other. Mm-hmm. It just really gave that vibe. It does. So. It does. Mm-hmm. I agree. I was thinking about swapping them, but now I'm glad I didn't. Um, nice. I ended up going the bride goes rogue. Ooh. Um, it's it's like if Enchanted was sexy. <laughs> it's like if Enchanted and I can see you <laughs> had a love child. Um. Yeah. Just, I mean, it doesn't quite fit the, like, same old tired, like, it's not the same place over and mm-hmm. up, but, like, they do, like, eye contact across a crowded room. It is a masquerade. It's a sexy masquerade, but they have the eye contact. They, like, immediately meet up. They have that, like, loaded mm-hmm. conversation, banter. Mm-hmm. And then they have a really intense sex. Um, <laughs> and then she really was, like, do. flushing the whole way home, oh, and they're I planning on meeting up again. Only mm. for it to be revealed that they do, in fact, know each other, um, unfortunately. But initially, <laughs> initially, she was like, please don't be in some- love with somebody else because I want to continue to bang you. Yes. And I respected her decisions so much. I love I, that book. Didn't we all? <sighs> what did she call him? Uh, Her king. My king. My king. What yeah. the hell is going on in that book? <laughs> and he was like Raynette or something, which was like, he called her like Mon Chaton or like Kitten. There was a lot. Of French things happening. There was a lot of things happening. Yeah. Period. Um, yeah, but the the My King thing got me down good. It got him down good too. Yeah. It floored him. We were him. all down good. Mm-hmm. So we were all enchanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all um, of us collect the bookstagram when those arcs went out collectively, <laughs> we were all losing our minds. <laughs> we were enchanted by that ooh. book. Also, I love that cover. Mm. It is a good one. I'm enchanted by the cover. It is a good one. Um, yes. I don't think I had any backups for that one. Except Mm-mm. for, well, Anna Maria. Okay. Better than Revenge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Guys, you just actually, like, recreate the entire song. <laughs> In the <laughs> I'll do the backup vocals. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Can't take it back! Can't take it back! So much better, yeah. I'll just stand really far away so you get that kind of echo <laughs> equality. This is the one I was referring to when I was pretty sure we had the oh. same one. Queen Bee. Yeah. My Omelie yeah. Howard. Because the, the song itself is pretty childish, almost. Yeah. And like, the YA. Yeah. And also, it literally is like Revenge. she stole her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Also, her reputation and her life and all of that. But she did yeah. steal her yeah. boyfriend, kind of. And yeah. she does and she was out. fully justified for revenge sure. and ruining for sure. life. But it was literally like, oh, you messed yeah. with the wrong person. I'm going to mm-hmm. ruin she, your like, life. She went away, had a glow up, trained to become the perfect <laughs> debutante. She like read Machiavelli. <laughs> As she you do. committed. She committed. And I love her so much. Mm. She did. It was, I, it was I had no backups. Movie. I had no other books to consider but no queen queen b just it really rounds out just all the vibes of the song oh oh wait you know um, who is a moth Keston. <laughs> he is he is. is a I moth was like, <laughs> I was like okay i'll support you at the end um so i was reading this book um today the perks of loving a scoundrel by jennifer mcquiston and i i kid you not a line in the book like a moth drawn to the gaslight <laughs> he followed her there, it's not revenge okay the book itself is not about that, but he himself admitted to being a moth drawn I to the gaslight. I want so badly to put together a recommendation <laughs> post of books based on Better Than Revenge Taylor's version, and then it's just like Mothman erotica. <laughs> My God. <laughs> I just thought it was so perfect. It is. Like, the fitting the fact that I, like, heard Ooh. a line in my headphones that was like a <laughs> moth drawn to the gaslight. Because it made it historical. <laughs> the gaslight. That's um, what did it. Yeah. That's what did it. So I am happy I did not forget that because that made me chuckle. <laughs> and then to kind of take the take the mood back down oh, a little yeah. bit, we've got Innocent. Um, and this is the one that could be interchangeable, I think, with A Kiss to Remember. Um, so the one I chose was The Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by KJ Charles. I admit it's not out yet. I'm cheating. I mean, that um, is knockout. That's true. That one's closer to being out than this one, I guess. It's um, fine. Yeah, that's like August 22nd. This one, I think, is like September or November or something. Um, That boy just wanted – he just need, he needed to be told that he was still innocent because his father does a number on him 
and the trauma is still there. Like, I think he, he's not 32. He's like 26. But for 13 years, he's carried the scars literal on his face and just emotional. Um, and just like, I, I, I can't spoil it, but he's doing he's doing something bad and it's not feeling good. Um, he's doing something bad and you don't know what it is for a lot of the book, but you know it's happening. And it's like in the summary that he's like scheming. Um, and so then you see them fall in love. And then you see everything get exposed and just like the pain of that happening. But then the pain and like the love of the other hero, the Earl, like accepting the forgiveness. Like it was a lot. It did a lot of things to me. Um, But he basically like told him that he was still like he was okay and still an innocent Um, in like not a way that's like insulting because the song the song is as a major insult yeah i have a rough time with this song Mm -hmm. i actually i love this song but i'm like i just like can you imagine you are an adult man and some 20 year old girl writes the most condescending (laughs) song where she's like we've all been there Shut Mm -hmm. up. I'm so sorry, Taylor. Shut up. I like the chorus of the song. I really don't like the verses. I don't like the way they sound. I I do like the chorus, though. The chorus gets stuck in my head. Mm. I had a few for this one. Um, uh, Where are my backups? Let's see. I had a couple of backups for it. I ended up going with Seize the Fire by Laura Kinsale. Mm. Um, that man's, like, low-key almost a war criminal. He's not a war criminal. He was just fighting in a war, and he had to do things in said war that he really did not want to do. hmm But what are you gonna do? You're in a war. What and, like, specifically, do? he had some that, like, when they- he eventually admits to it, um, and it, it involved, like, killing innocents, essentially, and it was a situation where, like, there was literally nothing else he could have done mm-hmm. in that situation. Like, there was no way out of it. Mm-hmm. Um... But he's really internalized all those things. And even though everybody thinks that he's, like, a war hero and he's awarded and lauded and stuff, he really has internalized this, like, I'm a bad person mm. mentality. And His thinks, castles and were crumbling. His castles were crumbling. He thinks he's a bad person. He actively acts like a bad person. He, like, cons the princess he's supposed to be helping most of this book. Um, and I think she really takes on that uh, you're still an innocent aspect. But also at the end, she sees some shit. Mm. Uh, and ends up being uh, quite PTSD ridden herself and so by the end of that book it's kind of a like they need each other to like help them heal from the things that they saw and were forced to do yeah, yeah so I think sense. they both needed that message it's a heavy one but also mm-hmm. they spend some time stranded on an island with a baby penguin so you win some, you lose some. You win some, you lose some. I also, this was the one that initially I went, someday my duke will come. Because um, mm. I think she really internalized it as like, I don't deserve love because I did yeah. this thing. And everybody mm-hmm. else had to kind of be like. Mm-hmm. She she really fully anticipated that that, him to. Yeah. Well, but also her whole family is like, I'm really sorry that yeah. happened to you. And they were so sad that she didn't tell them. And yeah. Like, um, yeah. So I think she needed to hear that. And then my other one was Devil's Daughter because I think Wes Ravenel really internalized mm. the, like, I'm a bad person thing. Or, like, he goes on and on about how, like, he couldn't marry Phoebe because he did such horrible things when he was off mm. being a rake. Um, I can see that. And also the whole, like, he bullied her now dead, very sickly husband when they were in school together. You're so right. <laughs> he was, like, really awful to him and he feels so really, right. really terrible about it. I love West. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. He had to be told he was a wee, wee bit innocent. She was like, it's like all it. good, my guy. Um, let me see. What's next? Haunted. Haunted! My favorite. This is my private arrangements. Yeah. Nick. The argument is very strong. The arguments are the same. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know yeah. what to add. It's the, like... So uh, the, her like begging, don't leave me like this. Uh-huh. And then the he will try to take away my pain. Oh yeah, because she the, has the, the super nice guy. Yeah. Mm. It I, it's one that like back to December. I think it works for both of them. Initially, yes, they're, they're it watched for her, away. like begging him not to leave, mm-hmm. and then 
him with the boat scene, but also at the end when he mm-hmm. and he was. I mean, the boat scene. He was haunted. That oh, man he was real ghost. haunted. They're both haunted. I, yeah, like that both whole idea ghosts. of like yeah. I can't move forward. Neither of them yeah. can. I also like the uh, the fragile line. Mm, we both walk mm-hmm. a fragile line, but they never thought it would break. Yeah, I think that's him when she files for divorce. He's like, mm-hmm. huh? Mm. Mm-hmm. Just the pain when she stood there and watched him walk away. Oh, yeah. As soon because I had back to December first, and then the more I like thought about it, I was like, wait. Because mm-hmm. then you you said that you had it. I was like, wait. I don't feel like Caroline went to back to December for it. But no, then I was like, haunted. I'm like, I mean, she they definitely both, went they haunted. do both work. Yeah, they do both work. But I'm like, I think the initial impulse would be haunted. Um, it was because mine. it fits so well. Because they are very something else too. Oh, that I thought I had you figured out. Yeah. I'm like I I it hurts. It hurts bad. Mm -hmm. Listen to Back to December and Haunted while thinking about this book. You'll hurt your own feelings. (laughs) You will. You will. I went another second chance, another equally haunted. I mean, this man was ravaged. Daring in the Duke by Sarah McLean. Mm -hmm. Um. (laughs) He, I mean, technically, that man was haunted. Yeah, he was haunted by so many ghosts, um, but they all look like her. Um, but there's the line: his eyes went cold, uh, mm-hmm. or like eyes went cold, and like his eyes did go cold because in the in their back history, she, he appeared to have been trying to murder her. <laughs> and there was like a shift in his eyes, and she's like, "Oh shit, he's gonna kill me!" So then she ran away, and he scars the hero of book one. They all run away together as young kids, and then he's left to be the Duke's heir. It's a whole thing. It's a wonderful book. Um, great series, but that book did things to me. Um, and they did things to each other. And just like the <laughs> again, like the um just the wishing that he he didn't because she was in denial that he was doing these things. Um, and again, the fragile line, because they were like being pitted against each other by the crazy father figure person. Because they're at the when I first started the book, I was like, are they related? I was like, how is, is she like, I was like, what? And I was like, oh, she's got a different father. <laughs> like, that's, that's good. And mother, obviously. Um, so it all worked out. But he, that man was like, down for the count he like looked terrible felt terrible for 20 years he was just ravaged by the memories of what he did but like the reasoning of why he did it was very intense so then it's just like there were a lot of things working against both of them um she had others trying to take away the pain didn't work oh yeah the line was something made your eyes go cold and then he had to stand there and watch her run away technically but they still like meant all of the love and like the things that they said before that moment. Um, Cause that was a very like innocent, like child love. And then it was just wrecked and it wrecked me. So I was like, if I can't do private arrangements, I'm going with the, another second chance that absolutely gutted me. So mm. yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Uh-huh. Last kiss. Ooh. Mm. Love it. I did a lady for a duke um, mm. by Alexis Hall um, because they may not have kissed, um, you know, back in their history, but they neither of them, I think, thought that they would never see each other again and that mm. it would be as painful as it was. Um, because when you see the duke, he is just he has never recovered um, from guilt and the war and things that he did and also just losing his best friend. And then you have Viola who um, is so sad because she wants to tell him that she's still there, but like obviously things are working against them. And again, this song, it's like very hard to be like, how do you pick a romance novel for last kiss? Um, You'll find but I felt chance. like, <laughs> yeah. Or one where one of them had to fake her own death. Yes. Um, and so I was like, I guess you can't get any more last than faking your own death. And so, because like the first half of the book very much feels like very sad and very nearly hopeless for them because so many things and fears and stuff. Um, but then it's like if Last Kiss got a little bit of a happy ending because the ending of that book was a adorable and when he said little was it jack scallion oh mm, that made me sob 
A rapscallion. Oh, God. Yeah. So I also went second chance. I went Aphrodite and the Duke. Ooh, yeah. Um, I just really think there are lines about, like, I never thought you'd change your mind, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, like, the her waiting. Don't you change that mind. <laughs> and, like, the drama of her waiting yeah. for him to call mm-hmm. on her and then just never showing up. And then they find out later that he married someone else. <gasps> yeah. And the way that she has to go, she just, like, goes off to the country and doesn't come back to London for years. Yeah. Like. I would, too. Yeah. It's rough out here. Um. Mm-hmm. Similarly, my backup was uh, How to Deceive a Duke by Samara Parrish, mm. um, which he leaves yeah. because of a class difference thing, and he's pretty sure his mom and the ton will, like, actually murder her low-key. Mm-hmm. Not literally, but for A reasons. fish out of water dies gasping. Yeah, it's very dramatic, uh, but he also just, like, leaves. Yeah, he, like, he did. Huh? What is happening? We were going to get married. That one also, it's not like an engagement ball or anything, but the the third act, how he has to like he has to grovel, and the groveling so turns out publicly. to this very chaotic public. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny. Um, he was speaking I really like some the things in that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I felt like Aphrodite and the Duke by JJ McAvoy really had that like sadness. Yeah, initially, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, long live, a classic. Mm. I if I would do a, if I could give a whole series recommendation, I would give you the Wild Winchesters by Erica Ridley. Ooh. But if I had to oh, pick that's one perfect. Of them, it is perfect. If oh, I had to pick perfect. one, I would go Nobody's Princess because it has the royalty yeah. aspect. Um, she's oh. not actually a princess. That's but great. She's like yeah. a guardsman. They're heist books mm-hmm. for like vigilante justice. That's perfect. Yeah, a lot of the ton doesn't like them, so they have that, mm-hmm. like, that aspect. Yeah, nobody's princess. A band of thieves. Yep. Winning. I love that. Yeah. Um, I went as, like, meta as possible for the medieval, like, <laughs> thing. I did when and art are not in love. Nice. Um, You know, it's medieval. They're mm-hmm. things. They're technically, they're not a band of thieves because, I mean, they're the king's heir <laughs> and daughter and also another heir of another kingdom and a knight. So, like. But they're ragtag. They're raggedy. Um, at some point. They, but they're they raggedy. There. They're raggedy. The the friendships between all of them. And then they're he's got like a art has like a friend who then has the, one of the maids is with him and very cute. So I just think like the, the kind of the found family, like the friends, the friendships really prevail mm-hmm. in that book. Um, like I said, there are like two relationships um eat like in it that are main. And there were no dragons, but they would fight the dragons if they were there. I was like, I don't have time to read some historical fantasy thing. <laughs> um, but I was like, in my heart, I did. I didn't though. Um, but they got they got as close to like battling things as they could because there was a big battle. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, now we're getting into the bonus tracks. Two of them are bonus, and then the vault. Um, so ours, one of my one of my favorites. Um, really? or at least when I was growing up, it was one of my favorites. Yeah, mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, I did get the Off My Lawn by Daria Vernon, nice. frankly, because she's got a gap in her teeth and she loves point. the gap in his teeth in the song, and he loved the gap in her teeth. Um, so I was like, oh my god, and then like the waters are rough, whatever, mm-hmm. and then they're also swans in water. It just, you know, the it vibes, worked, and right. it's a very fun kind of like like spunky light spunky like we're the only ones who are going to understand our love Mm -hmm. but that's fine um because i feel like it was a very chaotic pairing like no one really expected them um to get along like that and so i feel like it was a very like like just theirs um rather than like anyone else's so that one gave the vibes it's a good one it's a good one I mm-hmm. went with the Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen, with uh-huh. AJ Charles. Mm-hmm. I I the don't tides, have the the water was the water high. was rough. Yeah, um, um, so rough. The stakes were high. <laughs> the stakes were so high, just like the, the tides were high, and the water was rough. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't have much else to explain there. I just feel I feel like, like their relationship too similar, like yep. soft. Mm-hmm. Theirs. Like, they didn't need to explain it to anyone, right? 
Yeah. My um, only other one for that was One Fine Duke by Lenora Bell. Um, again, I think it's just a very like light and like two people who maybe shouldn't have fit together who did. Um, but there's a line in the song, I love the riddles that you speak. And he loves the riddles that she speaks because she's like breaking codes all over that book. And he's just very in awe <laughs> of the things that she's doing and the riddles that she's cracking. Um, and so I thought it was a cute little, cute little um, story to pair with the song. Again, that's my favorite Lenore Bell book. So I just want to talk about it as much. Heartbreaker as by Sarah McLean would probably mm. be this one too. Yep. Puzzle box. That, like class difference. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Is it? It's me. It's me. Yep. Superman, yep. which is such a bop, but I, I don't like I don't like the vibe of being like, I'll just be here waiting. That's why mine reverses it. I thought about Mwahaha. that. I didn't. I ended up going with How to Win a Wallflower by Samara Parrish. Mm. Um, I just feel like she really looked up to him. Mm-hmm. Not to say that she didn't also like have any sense of self worth, and she really helps him a lot of the book. Mm-hmm. But I think she just was like really in awe of all the things that he was. He was like an inventor, like a scientist, and she yeah. was like, "Wow, that's crazy! You're so smart." <laughs> she wow, was also very crazy. smart and really helped him yeah. out again. But yeah, it was the like crush mm-hmm. on the brother's old, like older brother's best friend thing. Mm-hmm. And she really mm-hmm. spent a lot of her life looking up to John. Yeah, so that's mine. I agree. That's all I got. Mine is a book that no matter how many times I read it, it's a five-star read. I love it. I can't remember it. As soon as I finish, it is instant amnesia. I don't know what Christy Carlisle put in it, but every time I finish, it's like a blank slate. Do you know what people would give to be able to read their favorite books for the first time? I I swear. I swear. Like, I have read it three times. Well, I read read it like half for this episode, but like two and a half times. And as soon as I finish, it's just gone. But it, but the experience of reading what it was great. Is uh, oh yeah! Oh my god! Never said that is so fitting. It's Lady meets Lady meets Earl by okay. Christy Carlisle. Um, <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I thought I might have missed it. No, no. Um, so I don't have, I guess, much of a plot because because it's one of those. It's, a, it's very soft. Not a lot happens. It's very relationship driven. Um, she is going on a train to her like aunt or something. It's like a state. He is also on the train. Um, technically he saves her on the train once, um, because there's this icky groping guy. Um, and then they like get into a fight because they, it's a kind of cats and dogs. Um, and then they end up going to the same estate and she's like, what are you doing here? And it's because he was actually just, um, he just got into the title, and so now he actually owns the place where her aunt lives because her aunt was the, um, like, mistress of this guy's, like, r- relative or whatever. Um, everyone thought it would be left to her. It wasn't. So everyone's kind of mad at him for, like, coming in and being like, hey, I need to s- sell this because I need money because his castles are crumbling. That's kind of a backup for that song. <laughs> um, it's not as sad, but, like, he was he felt very sad about himself. <laughs> and his his ships were truly in the harbor, but there was no steam coming out of them because um, he lost all of his money and right. couldn't fund it anymore. And so um, they come into like a kind of alliance at this estate. Um, she's trying to find a way for him to be able to like sell it to them. And she, her aunt is spunky and the aunt's partner is also. Sp- it's a it's a it's a very fun and it's very cute. Um but the end, she basically saves him. She is the savior of the entire thing. Um, he, like, she's, I don't want to, I can't really spoil it, but, like, just the, thing, the things that she does, he has to kind of accept that she's going to be the one um, to help him. And um, her, her, her whole thing is, like, helping people. Um, like, her family, like, talks about it. And so um, while it started off with him saving her, she ended up like giving them the ability to be together um and also i was when i was like rereading it the word love struck is in it and that's also in the song so i thought that was just a cute little coincidence and that made me happy um i just got the arc for book three so i'm gonna reread book one because i'd like that one too reread this one for the first and forever time because apparently it's always gonna be like it's the first time. Um oh oh yeah, uh loved you from the very first day. Very insta love. 
it's very it's a very instant love one the attraction is very instant um and so that was i think the thing that started me on this one was the insta attraction insta love um i've loved you from the very first day nice yeah um okay electric touch into the the vault um this one (laughs) i got very literal um (laughs) Because I just remembered that I had read a book about someone being very invested in the weather. Um, and, like, the – if you go on Spotify, like, it's, like, lightning uh-huh. for the song. Right. And electricity is frequently used to describe their attraction to each other in this book. It is the Duke's Rules for Engagement by uh, Jennifer Haymore. Um, it's from Entangled. It pubbed, I think, last late last year. Basically, she owns a matchmaking company, and um, he is a duke going there. He needs was he a mom um, to get matched? <laughs> he was not a moth, but she was holding the matches. <laughs> <laughs> he was holding his like electricity rod, and she was the lightning that it caught. Um, but no, they're they're both very invested in the weather. They, it's a common interest, but she's trying to match him up with someone else, and then obviously they fall in love. So she was and... she was holding the matches. <laughs> Yes. She had a little bit of a scheme in there. Um, But there there was literally like the line of um, like, the what is this? It says, they both have a fascination with, oh no, that's me writing it. Well, (laughs) this is embarrassing. (laughs) Reed's own note. (laughs) Reed's own note. It's somewhere. I have it. Um, Electricity bolted through um, Mm. them. So it, it was used throughout a few different um scenes like that and just like touching it was a big thing between them (laughs) the temptation to touch and the forbidden touches and stuff Mm. um and he just didn't really believe in love at all and so that kind of brought him back to life um and like made him because he had a he he had a failed engagement um and he was kind of like drugged through the mud dragged through the mud um and so she was kind of teaching him that he can be in love again well Speaking of not believing in love anymore and having various failed engagements and needing someone to bring them back to life, I went with We Could Be So Good. Like, mm, that's another one that I have coming up. I thought about it for a different one that I yeah. suspect you probably went with. I ended mm-hmm. up going with this one just because there was so much, like, so much of that song is about the fear of like this is also gonna go badly but i'm hoping yep. like i just need it to go right this yep. once and that feels very well really both of them um mm-hmm. andy having all of his various like failed engagements and relationships uh and nick having had to hide being queer mm-hmm. his entire life and never even considering like a lasting relationship so it just felt very like they kind mm-hmm. of brought each other back to life and it was like instant chemistry and like yeah. instant friendship and stuff. So. I would co-sign that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, when Emma falls in love, a cute one that I had trouble with because I couldn't decide if I wanted a book that speaks to the speaker or the muse, mm. like if it's about the person who wants to be Emma or if it's about Emma mm. herself. Mm-hmm. Um. I ended up going with It's About the Muse, although I think there are various book series that you could argue. There's usually, like, a a plain sister who, like, loves her beautiful sister very much, and the beautiful sister gets her own book, and then the plain sister has to get her book. I feel like that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, But I ended up going with The Good Girl's Guide to Rakes by Eva Lay. I just really like the line about, like, all the bad boys would be good boys if they only Mm -hmm. had the chance to love her, and, like... There's also various lines about, like, she doesn't really put up with, like, she won't take your shit. She'll stand up for herself. Mm -hmm. And also, like, she doesn't like to show people that she's going through a hard time. And it all just felt very Celeste. She's, like, this perfect, beautiful young woman. Like, the height of propriety. That's why she can Mm -hmm. take Kieran into these places and try to get him a high society wife. Because she, everybody trusts and admires her so much. Um but she'll, like, fall apart when she's alone. And also, Kieran is a bad boy. (laughs) But he became a good boy. He did. He's got his little eyeliner, his little poems. Mm. Well, really, it's more that Celeste became a bad girl. But he reformed. He's not sleeping around. 
Now, Unless it's an messy. orgy with Celeste. That is true. They're, you they're never cameos. saw it, but they are cameos want. in that third book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every winners. time she mm. was like, I'm really sorry, Kieran, we can't have an orgy. Took me out. <laughs> well, I said, Hannah, what books do you know where the heroine's named Emma? <laughs> and I had three. And I chose The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. And it actually kind of works because the first page, um, it's all about her being like, I have to do this on my own. Like she, because her father is a deadbeat guy and he's terrible. She just has to like walk into the hero's castle basically and like proposition him and like, or but technically at first is ask him to get the bill that she's owed. Um, and then he propositions her and is like, hey, why don't you? <laughs> marry me and i'd be getting air on you and it's all good um but i think she is a very like independent like she will speak her mind he was never going to be the same after that's true after her um his world was turned upside down um was it patches that little kitten um i don't remember no it's i think it's breaches breach breach yeah <laughs> breaches. she just looked at something Mm -hmm. he's like it doesn't have a name she's like uh preaches uh, <laughs> um so yeah i just feel like she was like a very um strong heroine while still being kind of like the ideal like very um first heroine in a series kind of vibes mm -hmm. you know she sets the standard um she's kind of gonna be the the glue that ties the friend group together um as it goes on and her name is emma so, so there you have it. Yep, I said we're book doing it because I didn't want to think too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a book he couldn't put down, and he was just gonna be a little vigilante with a little <laughs> orphan. I always forget about that. Stuff, I know, but... very random, very random know. book. <laughs> Ooh, I can see you. The way that that <laughs> song awakens things in me every time i listen to it suddenly it's grown i on me. am so yeah. sultry <laughs> i am a temptress when that song comes on it does not matter that i'm like wearing pajamas and haven't washed my face i'm immediately the most attractive person in the world <laughs> it, it inspires a self-confidence heretofore uninvestigated by scientists <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that Ooh. um well, the 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 standout line to me was the up against the wall. I figured. So I said to myself, Hannah, what books do you know that have epic wall scenes? And then I, I came upon Hotel of Secrets by Diana Biller. Sure. And I said, God, that's the perfect book. Because one, he's a virgin. So she's just <laughs> kind of like, what if I touch you? Like, what are you going to do? Like, what's going to happen? Because, like, you, you don't really know, like, what, what's going to happen. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> like... This is uncharted waters. Um, like what? What are we gonna do? Um, and so like their chemistry is crazy. The the like tension of him being a virgin and like not knowing what to do, and then like reading books about it, and then like having the like, it is such a horny book. And there's so much else happening. So the fact that like the relationship and the romance was able to be that strong and like sensuous throughout the entire thing was so impressive to me um but there's a double wall scene and it's in a closet <laughs> and she's basically had this thing where she saw someone like leaving one of the linen closets like early on in the book she's like what like they can trist in a closet like how does that work so then she investigates the closet and she's like oh your hands could go here there is a perfect shelf like placement and she's she's like what if i make all of the linen closets trist worthy that would draw people's patronage um and so she, like, mentions it to him one time, and he's like, expand upon that. He's like, <laughs> tell me more about the linen closets. Say more I would like right to know. now. Yes. Uh, speak now about the linen closets. And she does. And he's like, yeah, let's go do it. And so they go into the linen closet, and she, like, is braced up against the wall. He goes down on her, and it's so hot. Tables are turned. He's pressed against the wall. She goes down on him. <laughs> My God. He's like, what? It just because it's like their first one of their first like physical moments of intimacy, and it's so hot. That entire book is just burning, and like the colors of the cover. I don't know. Like when I hear that song, I think of those colors. I hard to explain, but it it works, 
and just the, the thought of him being a virgin and being like what like what would you do if i touch you <laughs> they both wanted to know so curious minds yeah. were listening <laughs> uh very nice seconded seconded mm-hmm. um i when i hear this song think workplace secret affair. yes Technically, they were um, in her workplace, but yeah, no, I, I, it gave me like age gap, like workplace forbidden, right? Like, right. You know hiding. what it gave me? It gave me the governess game. Mm. I cuss it there uh, because she is his mm-hmm. governess, and she has been into him from the moment they made eye contact and had a little conversation at a bookshop. And she thinks he doesn't yeah. even remember who she was, but she was very into him. I thought about I using it for Enchanted that. because oh. it was like. And you find out he does remember her because um, mm-hmm. he still has the he, books. He plays it off. Yeah, but he thing. plays it off like he, mm-hmm. he doesn't. But she ends up, through a series of silly happenings, becoming his governess for two of the funniest children that were ever written. Um, mm-hmm. But she is so into him. And he is very into her, but he refuses to, like, acknowledge it at first because he's like, well, well she's a prim and proper little governess. And she's like, I'm not going to sleep with you, except maybe I will. <laughs> And they are so into each other. And also specifically, there's a scene where he goes down on her against the shelves in the library. Mm-hmm. So number one, up against the wall. Number two, there's that whole like, what, what would they do if they only knew aspect of yeah. like, you know, somebody could find out. And immediately after he goes down on her, one of the girls comes in and is like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, just looking for books. We're just in the library looking for books. It's so funny. I reread it. It killed me. She comes in. She's like, Ugh. dropsy. Because the doll has died again. There's a doll that dies every day. It's a whole thing. Um, oh, Millicent. Just the, like, the tension of, like, working together, but being so, like, I want to, what would you do? Because mm-hmm. I can see it. I like it. And, like, she's very into him. I did have a couple nice. of backups. My first thought was actually The Hellion and the Hero by Emily Sullivan. Mm. He's up. It's a second chance. He's a PI who's been hired to like be her bodyguard. Um, and while they they go to, oh, where do they go? It's somewhere like exotic. They do a lot of gambling. Um, there are a lot of suspenders, suspender action. The right? suspender, yeah. Don't get me started yeah. on the suspender action. But she yeah. specifically is like really into him, but he won't do it. So she's like, I'm gonna go find a lover. And he literally in the elevator, because that something happens and he has to kind of step in and help her out. And he's like, if you want to love her that badly, <laughs> let it be me. And they like arrange because the first time doesn't go as planned. She kind of mm-hmm. freaks out. So they have to arrange a second tryst. It's mm, everything is on fire. <laughs> I also thought the proposition might be a fun one for this. Yeah. I was thinking if I could like include that one anywhere, and I was like, I my brain is too tired. But that would be fun. It's really more him who can see her legs. Yeah. Well, she's a virgin too, so like, what would you do if I touch you? Like, what's gonna happen? Like, I want to know. True. But it has the so like, it works. workplace. They don't want anybody mm-hmm. to know type. Mm-hmm. Technically, Yo. um, my my other one was a matter of temptation by Stacey Reed. She works for I him. I thought she's you a secretary. Might do that one. Um, and the wall scenes wall in scene. that there are two. Oh. One is. Up against the wall. One, he spins her around and she's pressed against the wall and it's from behind and it's very hot. I did not think we were getting that scene and then we got it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that is a horny book too. It is a horny book. It was a it was a fight. If it, it was a fight to the death between these two for me to pick. Um, but the more I kept reading like Hotel of Secrets, I was like, yeah, the, the vibes are a little bit more there. Um, but A Matter of Temptation, what a book. Like he just runs into a, the nearest body of water. <laughs> and he has too many emotions. I can see you. I can see you running into the lake. He said, no, but I <laughs> you're can see you. I was watching out the window, <laughs> and he didn't think she saw. And he's like, "How'd you know? I can see you, sir." Um. So yeah, that one, the wall scenes stuck with me. Like that one, I immediately knew. I like, I knew that was. I I knew that they were there because they were tattooed in my eyelids. Um. The hotel of secrets. I was like, were they like? I know they were in the closet, but I was like, how much of a wall? But it was mentioned many times throughout the scene. I confirmed. So, here we are. Um, two of the best wall scenes that you'll ever done have. <laughs> right there. And that one again, like, she was working for him, so it was kind of, like, forbidden and all of that. It's true. Oh, also the Hellion and the Hero, which, again, was not my pick, but there's the line about, like, uh, you can see me as a secret mission. That mm-hmm. immediately put me on the, like, Emily Sullivan Spies series. Mm-hmm. 
it was just the one line. But can you imagine this playing in the background of like a spy? Well, he was he was technically kind of a spy in Hotel of Secrets. He was on That's a secret true. mission. It was a, it was a spy. secret to no one. <laughs> Everyone knew the secret, but but he thought it was a secret. <laughs> that was a good bit. That's a great book. Yeah, I need to reread oh. it. Mm. Um, yes, Castle. <laughs> He's so bad at that. Uh, Castle's <laughs> crumbling. Ooh, yes. Um, this was a hard one. Because, like, mm-hmm. how many romance novels? Whatever. I went with the rake ass. Um, mm. Specifically towards the end when she, like, really breaks down. Yeah. Um, although just kind of generally, I feel like it fits the vibe because so many people, like, really hate her for what she mm-hmm. does. Um, but, like, specifically at the end, she... She gets in it deep and pisses some people off. And then she's, like, an alcoholic. So mm-hmm. she's, like, really deep in it. Like, things are not going well for her. Um, yeah, I think – because I was, like, going – the amount of times I, like, went back through my Goodreads challenges of, like, the past couple years of, like, looking at all the books I read, I think I passed that one. And I was, like, it would fit the vibe. But I – It's the vibe – well, you didn't like it as much as I did. I, well, that's um, – I was, like, I don't remember enough. It fits the vibe. So, There's like, a lot of the, like, the, the people – Chant, like screaming that they hate me is just very I think that's a very her. like yeah there were literally I think that's the one where there are like crowds that gather to protest at one point um the mm-hmm. the group of them not individually her but like she was getting death threats and stuff the whole time um I also thought about this one for dear John mm. just the thing that set her on the whole path was a guy being really awful and seducing and yeah. leaving her and like dragging her name through the mud but she she has big my castle's crumbling energy yeah i can see that um i went with the beast of bezik by emily howard so i did she is the only author that i repeated i was like mm-hmm. well it's not ya so they're kind of <laughs> separate um i really wanted to go to someone who like really just hated themselves mm. <laughs> as sad as that sounds like mm-hmm. someone who just was really like it's like you don't want to know me now like you don't yeah. want to know like who i am um in the book he is like in his past he was like handsome he had his pick of women um and then he goes off to war and he takes several bayonets to the face he gets ravaged and he comes home and he calls himself a monster several several times he doesn't want to look in the mirror he doesn't think he's lovable he hates himself um he's in severe pain so there's also just like the trauma and the like constantly like reliving all of that um his fiance took one look at his face left him his father took one look at his face and died had a heart attack and so he's dealing with a lot of external and internal things working against him and in the in the book if you search castle doesn't exist in the summary he has a castle Interesting. so i know so like he has i'm it's apparently canon because it's in the summary that he he is in a castle but they never call it a castle in the book um they call it a mansion I don't know. I I reread like parts. I think like a state hmm. or like I think I they like, like it an was abbey at one definitely point. a castle, but they I know. Didn't say it. So like unless I was spelling it wrong, but I think I searched it multiple times. I was like, how is this not popping up? Um, I just think like his entire world fell down at that moment. It also gave me um the one the last uh, the last Lisa Clapis, the one that you loved, Love in the Afternoon, Love in the Afternoon. Um, that to me too like like just the thought of someone like coming back and like everything that he knew and like who he was in society was mm. like different mm-hmm. and like changed um and that like he's like you don't want to know me now like i am i want to be alone with this crazy dog <laughs> but the beast of bezik has always like stuck in my mind of just like because that, that one is very similar to the duchess deal mm-hmm. they're executed very differently but the setups are very similar they both have to like get heirs and stuff um and she was also ruined when she was um, younger and her castles crumbled earlier than his did um, by the same guy who's trying to ruin her sister. So there's a lot of things happening there. Um, so that one also could have technically worked for Dear John. Um, but yeah, I really I really felt that. Also, A Duke Worth Fighting For by Christina Britton. Um, didn't want to repeat, but he is also scarred and feels very like unlovable and he is a virgin hero who just feels like no one wants to touch him and that he's like a monster repelling everyone um and that one my heart broke in that book but it was so good 
Um, but yeah, I also thought for the Lady Meets Earl by Christy Carlisle, that one is like a slightly less angsty castles crumbling because his entire like world and company like crumbled and he was feeling very down on himself. Um, but it wasn't like the you don't want to know me now vibes didn't fit that one because he he didn't really hold it over like that relationship had. Um, but the ships in the harbor. <laughs> He had ships. It was a shipping company. Um, so yeah, the Beast of Bezik sticks with me. That's a really hot book too. Jesus, <laughs> hot. Oof. Okay, foolish one. This one, I had Bookshop Cinderella because that one. She to me, this is like someone who is like not necessarily like it's a, for hopeless romantics, but. In these two books, I don't think any of the characters are hopeless romantics, but they are in love with someone who's clearly, like, bad news and not going to um, do anything. And so, like, that one at first. But then I read Not That Duke by Eloisa James. I didn't vibe with the book completely because I – it was just, like, rereading book two for the first half. But the the way the entire book is structured is that the hero is in love – or thinks he's in love with the heroine of book two. So the first half, he is courting her. He's in love with her, but he's attracted to our the heroine. But he's like, I'm still in love with Yasmin. So it's a whole thing. The heroine is like, I am really attracted to this guy, but he is like clearly taken. But also, what if he would somehow come around and want me instead? Um, she is his mother chose her um, as the one that he should marry because she's very eccentric and like. Um, like stands out from the crowd as the dowager and um, the heroine is also like very she has spectacles she's different not afraid to be different Um, and so like she had the hopeless kind of like I know he's courting her he's actively courting her his time is taken up by her like he's leaving me to be with her Um, but what if and then the 50% mark hits and things happen in book two so then obviously Yasmin is not going to end up with this guy um, so then he like turns it around and he's like, why don't I marry you? But it really felt like he was also the foolish one because he was lusting after Yasmin, who was clearly like he it was Giles is her hero. Um, and everyone in that book knew that Yasmin and Giles were were into each other. Um, and so everyone was foolish. Everyone was doing things. <laughs> and it I it, it is that song. <laughs> if you listen to that song, you were like, I want like love triangles and squares and all of these things that book <laughs> that's the one um sure the song slapped me in the face personally it mm-hmm. was rude to me it called me ugly called me <laughs> i said Taylor, it dishonored your cow it dishonored me i was like you didn't have to do that and then she said la 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 and i was like now is not the time not after you drag me um, I went with While the Duke Was Sleeping by Sophie Jordan, mm. um, which is obviously a retelling of While You Were Sleeping. While You Were Sleeping, yeah. Um, but I, I really feel like the the whole premise of this book is that she's a, a shop girl in a, a flower store, shop, whatever. She sells flowers. Mm-hmm. And this Duke comes in very regularly to like buy flowers to send to all these different women. And she mm-hmm. does what we all do. That classic fantasizing so much that you accidentally create an entire life for the two of you in her head and thinks that she yeah. kind of knows him, even though she literally does not know this man at all. Um, big relatable. There's also mention of another – she previously had thought this guy was going to propose to her, and it, they don't mm. really get into it, but it's another, like, failed – Foolish. Rela- like, Foolish one. He, he did it. So she clearly has this pattern of uh, yeah, getting yeah. her hopes up. And even though she – like, she knows – but mm-hmm. we've all been there. Anyway, then he gets in a fight with his you find out half brother. Um uh, and he gets she saves him from a carriage and he falls into a coma and everybody thinks <laughs> through reasons that she's his fiance and everybody's like, "Oh, we love you so much," except for the half brother who's a Scottish uh, uh um bastard, you know. Uh what you call it? <laughs> Illegitimate child. There we go. I was looking for the nicer term, but he <laughs> was this bastard. <laughs> um He's an Ill- illegitimate child. Listen, is this my favorite book? No. However, I do respect that that man, number one, doesn't trust her that she's the fiance. Yeah. Number two, he spends that entire book seducing her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I respect that. So, like, the time did not come for her confessions of love with this guy. Although he, well, I won't say more than that. Um, 
things happen when he wakes up, but that's okay. He because yeah, cause her time was... did come for her confessions of love. Because he was the Duke, so he is the he is the hero, and the Duke buys a bride, um, yeah. which is the next. Or there's it's a the one book one. after that, which is the friend and the stepmother, which was crazy, and then um, the Duke buys a bride, which I really liked. I think that was my favorite one in that series. Um, I read while the Duke was sleeping, like pretty early on. I think when I was getting into historical well, romance, you reviewed it two years ago. I know two years. I was ago. on Goodreads, and I was like, oh, look at that. mm Hmm. Yeah, and I read I reread because I saw you had put like read it. And I was like, oh yeah, what did I think about that? Because I thought I gave it three stars. I think it could probably be three stars for me. Yeah, at this point. Like, it's. I mean, it's it was a good. It was fine. I think I was just like the movie a little too much. Oh, I I don't even remember the movie. I I oh, didn't I care love it. for it's it when I favorites. watched it. Um, so that wasn't my issue. I think it was just like it's very it missed the fun based. Yeah, like that wasn't it even missed, my issue. It missed some humor for me. Oh, I thought it was funny. I just it was like I feel like they didn't have a ton of conversation. It was mostly just them being mean to each other and then him mm-hmm. making out with her. Yeah, which like is fine. I had a good yeah. time. Um, <laughs> and I think it really worked for this because boy was she drinking her Delulu juice. She mm-hmm. was so like, it's fine. I'm, I'll set the record straight. But also, I mean, it wasn't her fault. There, there yeah. was extenuating circumstances but yeah that the whole time was like oh girl we've that's all been why, there that's why bookshop cinderella also really spoke to me because like she had the childhood friend who had never really like they'd always been yeah. like a sibling relationship and then um he comes back he's had a major glow up and she is just down for the count she is like enamored and like gives him whatever he wants and I, like we've all been there we all have like you've been over backwards for the one who just does not yeah. even care no. and it's like taking advantage and stuff um so i really felt her and it didn't last very long um yeah you know like she got over like she saw the light when she needed to see the light and she had some good words against him which i really appreciated um and she was also she thought she was a foolish one for thinking that she could end up with um the duke so there was that kind of situation but um i just really related to her like giving him all of her sandwiches and the back room and then she's the one who has to clean it and like cook we for him and he's like there, oh, girl. yeah it's rough out I, here I, I saw it i saw the vision mm. Mm. well we've we've made it to the wow. end we've got one more arguably one I of the best this. songs i like this one a lot uh timeless uh mm. the the historical romance song the history the honestly the romance song there, it's yeah it's just this one is for the romance readers mm-hmm. because who allowed this um mm-hmm. i had to go with one of dare i say the most classics classics the most classic so i look i don't know my brain isn't working again the magic again the magic <laughs> by lisa clapis none of the words i said leading up to it made sense but you all get the vibe. Um, I thought you were going with Lord of Scoundrels, and I was like, I don't quite. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Um, I, I like, love Lord of Scoundrels. I love it. I love it. It doesn't belong on Speak Now. No, um, I was like, huh? But okay. <laughs> I was like, I'll accept it. You said, give me the reasoning. I'm with yeah. you. I'll follow. <laughs> um, no, no. Again, the magic has that like timeless like forbidden class Ooh, difference excited. type love where it you you spend a good chunk of the first part of the book in the past with them mm. as like i don't know 16 year olds and he's like a stable boy uh who i think is like gonna get promoted to footman something like that um and she's obviously a, a young lady um but they have grown up together and they are in love and they like spend time laying down by the stream mm. And it's so sweet. And then her father finds out and he is sent away by her because she knows that he won't leave unless she tells him to leave. Yeah. Um, and her dad's going to like kill him if he, she, if, or if he stays. So she has to pretend to be like, I don't want to see you anymore. Like Ooh. she has to white fang it, which is always rough. Uh, and so he leaves and then she's in a horrible kitchen fire. 
and her legs are scarred so horrifically like she has to constant like every day she has to like bathe and put ointment on them like it's bad she almost dies it's a whole thing and then he comes back years later super rich he went off to america and he made his fortune and now he's back the dad is dead marcus is in charge now god bless and this man mckenna is here and he is out for revenge and his revenge is to seduce aileen I support. I li- I uh, and it's so it's like the it's so romantic. It's so intense. And did he want to like ruin her or like what? No, I mean, yes. Like what's his end game like marriage or just like no. end game like No, he just wanted to essentially like do something to her that was equivalent that would make her to remember, what was like, done to freak. him. Gotcha. Yeah. And he he has a rough time. She also has a rough time. The grovel, amazing. The the set, she loses her virginity against a tree, as you do. I the I insane the way the book this makes me feel. I it it just and you just know that no matter the time, no matter the place, these two people were meant to be together. They were so timeless, and it has that classic setup. Mm-hmm. There's also a really lovely side romance that I think also works. Shaw. Mm-hmm. He's an alcoholic and he has to like – he refuses to like be with her until he gets mm. clean, sober. Mm-hmm. It's quite lovely. Ugh, listen, the way this book makes me feel. I also did have some backups. Ugh. Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall I think had kind of a timeless quality to it, which is a sapphic magical fantasy type historical romance. And I, I think The Earl Takes All by Lorraine Heath could work if for no other reason yeah. than because of Lorraine Heath's um, jump many years into the future epilogues, mm. which are the most timeless coded epilogues. Um, oh, you're right. The Duchess Hunt. Um, that is a timeless epilogue if I've ever read one. Yeah. It but, still gets me. But nothing gets me quite like, again, the magic does. Ugh. <sighs> We'll do an episode on it. You'll read it. It'll be yeah. Great. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it on vacation. God, my body is ready. Me too. Um. Well, I did. We could be so good by Cat Sebastian. Um. It's a good one. I think it's a pretty like. I mean, I did it because one, the last page of the epilogue lives with me. Um. And it's just like a very. It, it was talking about how they were in their apartment now, but then. Mm. Mm -hmm. um how someday like that's not going to be the same but like they'll always be together so like to me that just felt very timeless but the story starts in 1958 and that's a date mentioned in the song um and i did a little happy dance when i was like i was like what are the odds i was like i know it's in the fit what are the odds that it's 58 and it was and i was like hell yeah i was real (laughs) real proud of myself um this one i originally thought hotel of secrets for this one Mm -hmm. um and then i moved it to i can see you and then did this so that that one was my backup this one is much softer yeah exactly so like they switched for reason well this one i don't think was this one was never gonna be i mean you you it was i can see you right was it this one electric touch electric touch yes i was like i don't think this one fits i can see you no um i mean so yeah at times but it's not sexy enough yeah, they they have the like the forbidden each other. They're like very into each other, mm-hmm. and the like and the forbidden what would nature you do? and the workplace. So I mean, just it could work. It's just like not getting a ourselves sexy. back. <laughs> it's just yeah. like when I listen to the song, I want like a very steamy book. And yeah, it's not. Hmm. Um. But yeah, I just thought it had a very time like the, just the way that Cat Sebastian wrote that book just felt mm-hmm. very very timeless. And again, like the last the last page got me. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, ugh, the relationship is so cute. And mm-hmm. just like, uh, we could be so good and then we, we're we going to be timeless. Like, I thought that kind of wordplay fit too. But, mm, gosh, I can't believe we did it. We did it. Wow. Good for us. Mm-hmm. I reread the halves of so many books. <laughs> I downloaded so many ebooks and searched oh. them for words. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many. And if the book didn't have an ebook, I said, well, it's not going in this list. I wasn't that bad. Well, because there were some that I knew that like, I didn't have to reread, but there were some I was like, if I could like search it, I could tell. But then it was like, you got to wait three weeks. And I was like, mm, no, not mm-hmm. going to do that. But yeah, this is an exceptionally like it's a it's a crazy wild challenge to do it with historical romances. Yeah. Um, 
But I think we did. I mean, I've read way we... more historical things. Well, I know, like, because so. it's, like, it's hard to, there are some, like, I, this, I feel like is a pretty, like, again, timeless album. Yeah, it was harder to do with Midnight's, because it's so Midnight's was harder. Speak yeah, now this is one deeply felt. historical romancy. Mm-hmm. So that made, that made the lives easier. Um, Midnight's, that was a hard. Well, it was a breakup <laughs> album, so. <laughs> that was a hard one. So, yeah, I, I mean, we're going to keep. We're gonna keep doing these as she releases them. We'll got we'll have to go back to obviously some um that we skipped just because we weren't doing this when they were released. Um again, Fearless and Red have a lot of breakup songs. So who knows how that's gonna go for us. But we will do it because we are on a mission, a secret mission, if you will. Um And this is our addiction. This is it is our addiction. Cause I would start reading and then I was like, what if I just finish the book? Like, I have what I need, and I could just keep reading. Mm. Yeah. I'm impressed with us. I think those are some good pairings. I'm more confident here than I was at Midnight's, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, let us know either somewhere, I don't know, Spotify, you can, like, type in if you have, like, any books that you think scream, speak now, songs, or energy. Mm-hmm stream speak now taylor's version i don't don't know what else to say we Um, kept it under two hours good for us i'm impressed go read some books based Mm -hmm. on your favorite songs yeah and now i i really recommend a spreadsheet if you have any interest (laughs) or like any artist that you want to pair songs with it is so nice because then you read a book and you can just like type it in and you've got it (laughs) especially with a memory like mine goes away so fast so fast yes well that's it dare you dare you say the end nice the end <laughs>